Dr. Max Sinatter studies healthy and concussed brains. He is the director of the Brain Research Center at UBC. He focuses his research on the nature of the processing performed by the cerebral cortex, especially our sensory cortices that deal with vision and audition. I'm kind of impressed with that. I'm kind of impressed you, too. You should be if I only knew what the cortices were. Oh, well, there that's more than one cortex. <laughs> okay, so I figured that out. But you're by training an ophthalmologist, correct? Uh, no. Originally? No, no, never? No, no, never. A neuro-ophthalmologist? I'm a neuroscientist, uh, but my work um, uh, focused, uh, at least early in my career, on the visual part of the brain. And so they recruited me to the Department of Ophthalmology mm. at UBC. Okay. And uh, it turns out that how a, the visual system has actually been a great system to study how using or misusing your brain early in life affects the way it's actually going to work for the rest of your life. So uh, they recruited me and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So when you don't necessarily misuse your brain but you fall on your head yes, you when do. you're five or when you're 10 or when you're 80, yeah. what happens to the brain? Well, you know, a concussion is, um, it's really a polite word for a brain injury. It's a mm. temporary uh, loss of function and you know, the brain is, you know, if you look at it, it's sort of made of jello, really. It's got the consistency of jello and it's surrounded by this fluid. And when you hit your head against something, it basically causes the whole thing to, to shake. In fact, shaken baby syndrome sometimes mm. involves uh, the same kind of what we call neurotrauma. Okay, and, and are babies more vulnerable? It would make sense to... Yeah, to babies are vulnerable, uh, but, you know, you're vulnerable at, at any age. Right. Uh, you know, uh, we talk a lot these days about hockey players, but, uh, in fact, you know, you can have concussions because of, you know, you fall if you're one of, you know, if you're an elderly person. Uh, and what happens in your brain is it doesn't want to get bashed, let's face it. Right. So if you hit your head here, for instance, you can actually do damage right at the front of the brain, but sometimes you can actually do damage at the back also. Like often, let's say you get hit. You know, you get hit here, and you know, it's actually the back of your brain that uh, uh, bashes against the skull. And the big problem is that the brain is inside this immovable object, the mm -hmm. skull. And so uh, it bashes against it, and then all kinds of bad things happen. You've got, uh, one of the things you have to remember is that even though your brain is only you know, 1.3 kilos, only 2% of your body mass, it's actually 25% of your circulation. So you've got all, this, all these blood vessels, a huge disproportion. 25%? 25%, 25% of your glucose consumption. Mm. It's an energy hog, it's a blood supply hog. And what happens is you, there's now evidence that if the trauma is more severe, that you get micro hemorrhages. So little blood vessels stretch, tear, burst, and then you got all this blood rattling around in your brain and the neurons don't like that because you know, then they're losing some of their blood supply. That's not good. You know, neurons have what's called uh, an axon, which is a mm -hmm. long wire that they use to connect to the next neuron because neurons like to chat with each sure. other. Then that's what they do. Um, and the axon can tear. That's bad, because once you've torn it, we don't know how to regrow it. Um, and the other problem that happens is that, you know, if a neuron starts to lose its blood supply, if its axon is torn, if the environment gets all messed up because of the brain being bashed around, mm -hmm. the neuron can actually get into a, this strange state where it becomes hyper-excitable. It just starts to scream all the time. And I think I've told you on another occasion that I used to make my living recording from individual neurons in the mm -hmm. brain. And usually they just go, you know, pop, 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 and they tell other neurons what they're thinking. Uh, right. And after uh, a neurotrauma, they can be in this state where they go Brrr, all the time. And they're just, it's called excitotoxicity. They're hyper excited. Mm -hmm. And they actually get into an energy crisis. Their blood supply is compromised. They're firing all the time. Uh, they're hyper metabolizing. And that can go on, you know, if it's a mild concussion, a couple seconds, a couple minutes. If it's bad, it can go on for days. So, how do you know it's mild and how do you know it's bad? Well, you rely on symptoms, basically. Uh, you know, so if somebody, if you think somebody's had a concussion, uh, you know, we've got 
about 10 different rating scales. There's something called the Glasgow Coma Scale. And, right. You know, you have all these questions that you mm -hmm. ask people, and if they're lying there like this, you know it's bad, and if they're walking around, but they don't know, say, what month it is, or, uh, you know, mm -hmm. where they are, or uh, they can't remember, uh, you know, or they've got vision problems, or, you know, it could be worse. If their pupils are different sizes, that's bad. Um, so you can, you basically go based on the symptoms. But even that's a little challenging because the symptoms you have will depend on the part of the brain that is injured. Mm. And as you suggest, you could get hit in the front and be injured in the back of the brain. Yeah. When you watch hockey and you see somebody like boarded or hit that hard and the head shakes, or you watch somebody go down a bobsleigh run, you see the heads bobbling, surely that's doing something to the brain. Yeah, you know, we, it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. You know, really the, the purpose of education <laughs> writ large right. is to get your brain mm -hmm. into the best possible state. And here you are, you know, you take this precious achievement, which I think is really our quintessential achievement, the human mm -hmm. brain, and you put yourself in harm's way. And, you know, things like boxing and, you know, football. Um, I think football, there's a concussion uh, on average one NFL game. Every, every NFL game has roughly one concussion. In hockey, it's roughly one concussion every three games. Really? One every three? three games. It, with helmets and pads and all of that, it doesn't seem to matter. The yeah, jarring no. and, the, and the, the speed uh, yeah. the boys are skating. Yeah, these are big, today. big strong uh, mm. people. And, uh, and healthy people. And healthy people, and they bash each other. And, uh, you know, the helmets work, but uh, I think they can be improved, and there's a lot of effort to improve the helmets sure. now because uh, the evidence now is that they're best for stopping sort of uh, direct bashes, but they're not that good at twisty bashes, right. uh, so what's called rotational mm -hmm. uh, accelerations. So they're, they're not so good for that. And uh, the new, you know, there's, I think there's going to be a new generation of helmets that even have sensors. So you can sort of, see, you know, they'll turn like a little red light will come mm -hmm. out on the head when you've been hit on the, on the helmet, when you've really been hit hard, and that'll be a signal. I think that's what we really sure. have to do. That'll be a signal saying, you better have a look at this guy. You better ask him, you know, uh, what day of the week it is and you know, read six numbers back to him and see if he can remember them. Well, in the early days of the NFL and the NHL and, and most major sports, the coach just put you back on the ice or back on the field. Uh, give your head a shake, get back out there. Yeah, I, I hope, I, I think, uh, you know, there's been so much uh, attention focused on mm -hmm. concussions in the last, and head injury in general. It's been, you know, driven by the fact that, you know, you lose these amazing uh, players like Sidney Crosby, but it's, you know, Sidney Crosby's important, but it's the 12-year-old kid, you know, who has a concussion in Sarnia, you know, who's, right. who doesn't become a neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you know that a kid has a concussion or a, or a Sidney Crosby? I mean, obviously you know, but could, could an athlete be walking around concussed and not know? Oh, yes. In fact, uh, probably three-quarters of them are underreported because, first of all, the athlete almost never wants to admit it because mm -hmm. you know uh, they're you know these are elite athletes in many cases and they're motivated and they want to get back in the right. game they think oh i'm a little foggy now but it's going to get better and you know they go back in and i think that was one of the problems that you know again i don't know the details of what happened to Sidney crosby but he got hit and then a couple days later mm -hmm. he got hit Again. again and again and, and, and uh, well as you know athletes today are more aware and their doctors are more aware. i know uh, sydney's neuro or his doctor said uh, he will not go back. He must not go back. He must not go back. Until he's healed. Now, what is going on in your brain? Let's take a break and we'll come back. What goes on in the human brain when it's concussed and it, it concussed and it's trying to heal? Okay, we'll talk about that. And why does it and why doesn't it? Okay. Uh, Dr. Max Sinatter, our guest, will return. <laughs> 